Hey everyone, this is Levi with Between Two Lines. Tune in next week. I'm going to take some time and talk about those weird moments where your blood sugar just rises for no reason. Uh, the beginning of anaerobic exercises, working out, lifting weights, or in the morning when you get up, you haven't even eaten but you got dressed and your blood sugar is already on the way up. That dawn phenomenon or uh, liver dump, some people will call it. Um, let's talk about what it is so you know what it is and you can start addressing it and improve that portion of your diabetes because um, when you don't it's a problem and it's a pain in the rear. Today part two of sports fitness and type 1 diabetes let's get right into it. So last week we talked about playing sports and working out with high blood sugar the frustrations that come along with it and some of the dangers that come along with it. Today I promise to talk about the hours leading up to the game or to the event or to the gym. How to arrive at the starting line with your blood sugar not only in check and level but stable. I spent a lot of time on a plane this week and thought about it and like with most things with type 1 diabetes the more time you spend it on it the more complex it got. So in order to maximize um, what I think you can get out of the video, you really need to put yourself into one or two categories. And don't read into it too much, just watch the video, figure out which one seems like more you, and try to apply some of the things that, that I've used and, and had results with. Um, the categories are, and I try to boil them down, but um, competitive and non-competitive. Your, your competition athletes and then your non-competition people who are your, your weightlifters, your power lifters, your runners, your 5K people exercisers, all aerobic activity. If you will put yourself in one of those two categories, um, that will help a lot. Don't take too offense to them. One's not better than the other. They're just different. And both of them require maximum effort. One's not harder than the other. But their goals are different. And if you'll figure out which one you are and address your diabetes accordingly, you'll have better results. That brings us full circle to arriving at whatever this event may be with a level, inline, and stable blood sugar. Let's start with the competitive athletes. These people have goals and they really all share the same goal. Win. Whether it's a team sport or individual sport, everything they do is about getting maximum performance out of their bodies to help their team or to get closer to victory. Every All the workouts, all the, the mental training, all the physical training, trying to get faster, they want to throw further, they want to kick harder, they want to swim further. They, all these things are not for the fun of it, it's so that they can become a better version of themselves and a better athlete to win. The way you prepare for that is different too as a diabetic. You've done all this work, you've done all this prep work, you're gonna to have to do the same with your diabetes. You need to eat a meal, a complex meal, that's gonna give your body the maximum amount of fuel to carry into this sporting event. Think about the precision with which you do everything else in your sport. You need to take that same precision to the way you pregame your meal. It needs to be a high carb, complex carb meal that you're eating three to four hours before the game that you, here's the kicker, that you know exactly how to dose for. You can't just introduce another variable. You've, you've already got the other team to worry about. You've already got the weather to worry about. You've already got um, any injury you may be dealing with. You could, there's, already, there's enough variables already. Don't make what you eat one of them. It needs to be something you're familiar with that you've eaten several times and have figured out, hey, I know when I eat this, I give X amount of insulin and it nails it. Six hours later, I'm always level, I'm always perfect. That's gonna take some work. You're not just gonna be able to guess at it. Even the more tenured diabetics still can admit, eh, that's gonna take a little preparation. I have to eat that meal six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times before I really have dialed it in perfectly. But to give yourself the highest chance of winning, you need to have the most fuel in your tank, the most glycogen available to your muscles, and you need to have dispersed the right amount of insulin. That way, when the game arrives, your blood sugar is not only within range, it's level and it's stable. And by stable, I mean it's still metabolizing the food, so more and more glycogen becoming available as the game goes on, and you don't just run out of gas in the second period, second inning, second quarter, whatever, and, have to, and your blood sugar starts dropping. You need that fuel to be a slow trickle of fuel, hence complex carbs. Now let's look at the other side. Your non-competitive athletes, these people are working just as hard. Your effort is just as high. This is not a comment about effort, but your goals are different. Why do people exercise? Why do people work out? Most people have got a goal in mind. I wanna lose 10 pounds. I wanna build muscle. I wanna cut fat. I wanna run a marathon. My doctor said I'm getting fat and I need to get healthy. Whatever your reason is, what you take into that workout is different as well. You don't go into these workouts trying to 
get the maximum amount of performance you can out of that workout. What you're looking to do is get the maximum amount of results from the workout. The way you lead up to it is different as well. You're not going to eat a humongous bowl of spaghetti every single day before you go to the gym for your workout when you're trying to lose 10 pounds. What you want to do is handle this the same exact way as a competitive athlete, but instead of giving yourself the maximum amount of fuel, you need to find out what's the minimum. So you're going to, instead of having a meal, you're going to have a snack. It's a snack. It's small. You're going to eat it closer to when you start working out or you start running. And even though it's less, it's metabolizing the same way while you're working out and providing you glycogen as you go. Too much and there's some left over. So it's got to go somewhere. A lot of times it gets stored. That's what you don't want. You want to give yourself enough to fuel and go through the workout or run or race without any leftover. That also requires just as much precision. You've got to know that snack like the back of your hand. You have to have eaten it a million times and know exactly how much insulin to give. Now, both of these events can introduce um, at the start of them, the liver dump, the thing I alluded to at the beginning of the thing. Next week, I'm going to talk on that. I've kind of avoided it intentionally, but the takeaways from this week are, if you want to perform at the highest level, athletes, or you want to achieve the maximum amount of results from the work you're putting in, you have to start off at hours before you even get there. Prep your body by eating correctly. As much preparation and work goes into that as the workout or the game itself. It's frustrating, but it's part of who we are. You're a type 1 diabetic. If you own it and you handle it, it's going to be a non-factor. If you haven't already subscribed and you like the channel, please do and please share it. I can't tell you how many times someone said that they shared it and their buddy said they had diabetes too or someone they knew through Facebook or Instagram. There's a lot of us out there that just lurk and aren't doing anything, but we're starting to lurk and that's step one is watching. Share it. Try to get some of those people hooked on stuff like this video. I'm not that great, but it means that they're interested and they're interested in doing better. And I think we all are. So we can all do our part, share this video, and let's get this thing rolling. Next week, we'll talk about um, those abnormal and kind of phenomenal highs that come out of nowhere. In the meantime, good luck keeping it between the lines. My name's Levi.